Welcome to the second part in a series on how to build what I refer to as a selectable latching relay circuit. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, I'd encourage you to go back and check that out so that you know what's going on with this circuit, the functionality and the idea behind building it in the first place. Namely, I had viewer requests to do so and, and the challenge was to do it without using a microcontroller. In this video, we're going to talk through a little bit of the thought process involved in designing a circuit like this one. Is this the simplest way to build a circuit like this one? Perhaps not. But I think there's something valuable about the way that I decided to build this circuit. The thought process is involved with it, at least. So let's look at the thinking that went into this circuit. When figuring out how to build a circuit like this one, the first thing one can do is just take an inventory of the basic, like the major components of the circuit. The control components and the active components, those which are going to do something in mass. In this case, we have four normally open momentary buttons that are going to control three latching relay circuits. That's it. That's all there is to the circuit. There's a lot of components on the board, but basically it's nothing more than three momentary buttons that actually do the latching and unlatching of the relay circuits in a mutually exclusive fashion. One at a time can be on. No more than one at a time can be on. As well as we have this fourth momentary button that serves as a master reset such that we can push it and any of the latching relay circuits that happen to be on will be unlatched or turned off and take us back to the zero or the starting state. So and then we can go back to pushing our momentary buttons and latching on and unlatching A, B, or C. First, let's think through what's going on with the master reset button. What is the basic functionality? What does it have to do? Well, just simply, when we push the master reset button, we want it to unlatch. We do a single push of the master reset, and we want it to unlatch. Relay circuit C, relay circuit B, as well as relay circuit A. That would be an unlatch event times three. One push of a button unlatches all three latching relay circuits. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We have to figure out which components would enable us to do that, but at least that's the basic idea. And it already gives us an indication of how our wiring may go. We can have one wire coming off of that master reset button and branching into three legs. And all those legs have to do is control something that will unlatch all three of those circuits at the same time. Why would we want to unlatch all of them at the same time? Well, because the momentary button, unlike a microcontroller, it has no way of knowing which of the three would happen to be on at any given time. So this is a sort of brute force solution that regardless of which of the three happens to be on, if we unlatch them all with a push of the master reset, then we know we're going to unlatch the one that did happen to be on. Well, it's brute force, but it works in the context of this kind of circuit. Then we have the more complicated scenario up at the top with these three buttons. What is it that we want each of those buttons to do? Well, first off, when we push button A, we want it to latch on relay circuit A. A single push should latch on relay circuit A. We know we want that. That'll be a latch event. Then, we also want it at the same time to that single push to unlatch relay circuit B as well as unlatch relay circuit C. We want this to be an unlatch. And we want this to be an unlatch. To turn them off if they happen to be on. Now if they happen to not be on, it's still going to unlatch them which there's no harm in that. It's kind of like if we push button A two times in a row, it's really good. it has no effect on latching relay circuit. A will still be on and these will have been unlatched, but they weren't on anyway, so it doesn't matter. Then, what happens with button B? Well, we want a single push of button B 
to latch on relay circuit V. We want this to be a latch event. And then, while at the same time, that single push should also unlatch A, and it should unlatch C. This should be an unlatch event, and this should be an unlatch event. And then the final button, C, when we push it, we want it to come down and latch relay circuit C. We want this to be a latch event, while at the same time unlatching B and unlatching A. Like that. That's what we want to happen when each of these buttons is pushed, regardless of the order in which they're pushed either. That if we push A, we want relay circuit A to come on and for and relay circuit B and C to turn off if they happen to be off. As well as the same occurs with B, the same occurs with C, except that we push B, we want B to latch, A to unlatch, C to unlatch. If we push C, we want C to latch, B to unlatch, A to unlatch. And if we push master reset, we want all of them to unlatch. Whether they're on or not, just unlatch. But generally, the idea is one of the circuits would be on, so we push the master reset, given that the button has no way of knowing which is on, we just unlatch them all and end up turning off the one that happened to be on. That's the overall idea. And this already, as mentioned with the master reset, gives us a sense of what the major wiring will look like. Is that from the master reset button, we should expect to see one wire coming off of it that branches into three. And then from the momentary buttons ABC, we should expect to see one wire initially branch into three. And B branch in one wire to three, C branch in one wire to three. Let's look at the original circuit so that we can see that, yes, in fact, we already have the overall, like the control wiring, would all, we've already mapped that. Just to look at the circuit itself, is that in comparison with our simple little diagram, we have the master reset with one wire that branches into three that when we push it, it unlatches all three of the circuits. Now there's the master reset. One wire, one, two, three. It branched into three. And this is controlling. This unlatches all of them at the same time. And then if we look at the latch wires, like from A, we have one wire that comes off and it branches into three. But we should expect to see a latch wire go to a different part of the circuit. That would be the expectation. And it wouldn't have to, but it's a pretty decent expectation to say, well, we should expect some separated out latching wire that goes to each of those relay circuits. We'll have one from A, one from B, that wire, that latches B on, and then one from C that latches it on, as well as it's going to branch and go out to the other circuits. But just in simplicity, let's see, is there such a thing on that? Well, there is. From momentary button A, there's this wire, which latches on relay circuit A. From momentary button B, there's this wire, this yellow wire, that latches on relay circuit B. And from momentary button C, there's this wire that latches on relay circuit C. And then at the top of this, move this down a little bit, that all of this kind of conglomerated, bird nesty looking stuff is actually these unlatch wires. That the yellow is controlling the latching of each circuit, and then these at the top are controlling the unlatching bits. And if we count them up, we should expect to see that if we have one latch wire from each of these, well, there's nine wires once they split into three, and so we have accounted for the latch wire of each one of them. That leaves us with six more to account for. And then if we look here, well, there's two, four, six. Those are your unlatch wires. 
and they're coming off of the same row in the breadboard that's also dealing with the latching. So there's nine, there's three here, six here. That's the way to kind of take this diagram to keep your mind focused when you're building a circuit of this sort. Having a diagram like this is helpful. That being said, let's get into a little deeper of the thought process of, okay, so the core of this is the buttons and then the latching relay circuits themselves and the way we've wired them together. Well, we've talked about the buttons, we've talked about the wiring, these, ma these major arcs of wiring, but what about the latching relay circuits themselves? How to build those? Well, if you haven't already done so, it might be a good idea to check out my video on how to build a single latching relay circuit. This is the same setup multiplied three times. It's just that transistors are standing in for the momentary buttons that I used in that particular video. But let's look at that, just a quick review of how to build a single latching relay circuit. 